Tom Adler and I'm here at the Art Museum of Greater Lafayette with Al Pounders, a painter who lives and works in West Lafayette, who has works in our permanent collection. Uh, thanks for joining me today. Uh, could you tell us a little bit about your background, maybe some of the things that affected your decision to become an artist? Well, I was always uh, some kind of artist uh, when I was a kid in school. I was a class artist. I did a lot of the stuff that the class wanted me to do. And I, went, I, was, I grew up in Buffalo, New York, and I uh, went to an, uh, a high school that, uh, that had an art program. And I went to, and I also had a scholarships to the Albright Art School in Buffalo, which I needed, we were very poor, um, and managed to get through that for three years. And um, making art has always been something I wanted to do. I decided at the age of 24 that I just stood there and said, okay, I'm going to be a painter. Among all the things I could have done, I could have been a designer because I studied graphic design mm -hmm. when I was in art school. Um, <clears throat> and from there, uh, it just uh, went on. I was, um, I was blessed with great teachers at the Albright Art School. Um, uh, at Cornell, where I did my MFA, I had some very good people who were mentors to me. I liked it very much. And i um, been painting ever since. <clears throat> in our permanent collection, we have four of your works. We have one of your large circle paintings, white dress with mold skulls, and then we have three prints of clothing. We have the Hoosier band jacket, mm -hmm. and we have uh, Japanese fantasy, and we have dress with birds and flowers. And we also have that big still life I did, which is six feet square. How did you miss that? The, oh, the still life <laughs> with the French flag? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I was going to separate that out from the other zone because it's so different. Oh, oh well. But uh, <laughs> anyway, could you tell us a little about, about the impetus for the uh, paintings that focus on clothing? Yeah, well, well, it started with a series of drawings I did of clothing when I was sitting in my studio. And uh, also, at the same time, I I'd, I'd stretched up a, a large group of circles because I was tired of rectangles. I just thought, I'll do something else. I thought maybe I'd do coins or something. I didn't know what I was going to do with those circles. But the, I put the two things together, and they seemed to work very well because of uh, the curvilinear quality of that clothing can take, mm -hmm. and it worked with the circle, and that was nice. And, and it just went on and added things to that, and to the, just the clothing things with art history parts and also anti-war things that I was doing during the late 60s and early 70s, okay. and all of those things seemed to fit very well into the circle. And um, I did that for 13 years. Okay. Now you, you mentioned the still life we have, um, mm. uh, still life with uh, the French flag. Right. Have you done a lot of still lifes? Or? Oh yes, uh, when I was in graduate school, I did my thesis on still life painting. Okay. Uh, not only a painted thesis, but a written thesis. And um, yeah, uh, and I did that for several years after I left graduate school, and uh, then I dropped it and was on to other things. I've done many, mm -hmm. many different kinds of things, especially during the seven or eight years after graduate school. <clears throat> um, and then landscapes has o have always been <clears throat> part of what I do. Excuse me. <clears throat> and. Um, um, it didn't become a permanent subject matter for me until I had gone to Italy on my sabbatical mm -hmm. with Lauren, my wife, and um, started painting that wonderful place. I had to, I had to just do that because this was ideal. Uh, <clears throat> the combination of uh, the farmers working the fields right up to the top of the mountains and uh, and uh, and nature together, it's, it, worked, it worked visually so beautifully for me, although I know those guys didn't plant that stuff mm -hmm. for me to paint. <laughs> it just was uh, something that I sought out. I, we took many trips up and down the hills looking for places for me to work all those years, 25 years of it, I think. I mean, the landscapes are really notable for the, your use <coughs> of bold color and so forth. Is that? Uh, an influence from some other artists? Or? Oh, sure. Uh, I've always been interested in the modernists, the, the French painters in particular, and uh, uh, 
when I looked out at the landscape and I saw all that green, I said, oh, I've got to paint it green. Mm -hmm. <laughs> push, push it in other directions for the emotional mm -hmm. quality I, f I felt about the place. And so the color is an, emo an emotional thing rather than a descriptive thing. Could you say a little bit in closing about what you hope to achieve through your painting, what you feel you've accomplished in your career, your long career as an artist? Well, I've had many influences uh, from the great artists of the past, going all the way back to the Renaissance, uh, although there's nothing Renaissance about my work, I don't think. Um, but painting is, uh, is a unique activity, and it stems, in my case, from being influenced by such, such artists as, as uh, Matisse, for example, mm -hmm. whose, read, whose writings I, I read avidly because he really nailed it. He really told me, and all of us, uh, what painting really should be for our time. Mm. And it's, it's important to, to, to be in, involved in our time, but I'm also interested in being part of all time in painting. Mm -hmm. I'm interested in tradition very much, and so I think that's reflected in my work. Um, but he told us that uh, you don't put apples in paintings for eating, and Cezanne said pretty much the same thing, you know, they're for looking at. And if that's the case, you've got to deal with how you feel when you're looking at that stuff. Mm -hmm. And so that opens up interpretation, it opens up all kinds of things, and I, I almost never work from my memory or from my imagination completely. I always have to have something in front of me mm. that tells me, this is what you should be experiencing, this is what you ought to be reacting to. Well, thanks very much for helping us document the works that are in our permanent collection. Mm -hmm.